is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning, everyone. It is January 10th on a Sunday. I'm Taylor Lazenby, and let's get straight to it with Dana Fulton filling in for Chris. Good morning, Dana. Hey, good morning. Good morning, everyone. It is Sunday. It is cloudy outside, but we are starting to get a little bit of light along that skyline. Downtown, thankfully, not too foggy for us this morning, but again, it is quite cloudy. Temperature-wise, we are in the low 20s with dew points a little below our temperatures. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's some patchy fog in spots, but we're not concerned about dense fog this morning as our breeze is coming in from the north northwest and the single digits and that's been some drier air building in uh, kind of stopping that dense fog that we saw a few days ago. Temperatures of close to 23 for much of Dane County about 21 in Lone Rock and 25 in Janesville right now so we're all sitting in a cool spot. It's not too cold outside but it certainly is a little chilly to start the day. Single digit wind speeds that should continue through the afternoon so we're really not concerned about factoring in much of a wind chill for us today. That's the good news. So plenty of snow on the ground that's helping to keep us cool outside when we have the snow on the ground and the clouds overhead it keeps those temperatures pretty steady for our overnight lows and for the afternoon highs really not going to add much on for our temperatures later today radar stays quiet even with this cloud deck we had a few light flurries moving through Iowa County earlier this morning but uh, now it doesn't seem like that flurry chances is really going to add up to much of anything likely not going to see any more through the rest of the day high temperatures will be in the upper 20s this afternoon again single digit wind speeds. We will take a closer look at your full 10 day in just a few minutes, Taylor. All right, thank you so much. Well, a new project is coming to Devil's Lake that could transform the state park's North Shore. Our Adam Duxter explains where the organizers are in this process and why they're excited about the potential for what's to come. Even in the dead of winter, Wisconsin's most popular park has something for everyone. I think a lot of people visit the park and they don't even know that this area is, is here. And no one knows this better than Bernadette Greenwood. The lack of crowds, um, obviously, it's just, it's just a great place where you can go anywhere in the park, you can get solitude. But today, the president of Devil's Lake's nonprofit partner is here showing off what could come as the seasons change. It's going to be what we call the gateway, a gateway facility. A new educational interpretive center on the lake's north shore. We will definitely have education about the local um, Ho-Chunk Nation and, 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 and the history of this park and, and how it began. This is something that's actually been in the works for Devil's Lake for decades now, since the early 1980s. They say if and when it would be complete, they hope it's something people can enjoy for decades to come. Right now, Friends of Devil's Lake is conducting a feasibility study, seeing if it'd be possible and how long it would take to raise the 50 to 18 million dollars a center like this one would cost. Greenwood says it'd be worth every penny. If more people are educated on how special Devil's Lake is, not just to go for a hike, then maybe they wouldn't do graffiti. Maybe they would think about the fact of putting garbage or dump, dumping something on the ground here and, and respecting it a little better. A site that even in the dead of winter, you know, so it is kind of off, off the beaten path, could be enjoyed not just for its beauty, but its history as well. Education is just so important to just humanity and to, to understanding our why we're here, our existence, and and uh, not to get philosophical, but just just this, how special this place is. In Baraboo, Adam Duxter, News 3 Now. Well, Greenwood says the feasibility study will likely take several months and longer for that fundraising for the site to begin. And there is a missing. Authorities in Greene County say a newborn is currently missing. The Greene County Sheriff's say and the village of Albany police say the baby girl was reported missing yesterday in the village of Albany. After the baby was born at home on Tuesday, the father gave her to a friend to watch. Since then, the sheriff deputies say an initial search has been unsuccessful and the father hasn't said who the friend is. Anyone with information related to the newborn's whereabouts is asked to call the Greene County Sheriff's Department. Their number is 608-328-9400. And House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and other House Democrats are laying plans for impeaching President Trump again after his supporters violently stormed the U.S. Capitol on Wednesday. Following his speech, a, senator, senator, a senior law enforcement official tells CBS News investigators are exploring why some individuals at the Capitol riot had weapons and zip ties that can function as plastic handcuffs. The Justice Department continues to pursue charges in connection with Wednesday's 
serious assault. That includes Adam Johnson of Florida, allegedly seen carrying Nancy Pelosi's lectern during the rampage. With less than two weeks before President Trump leaves the White House, congressional Democrats are preparing to bring articles of impeachment against him as early as Monday. It was an act of sedition that was incited and encouraged by Donald Trump. The draft of article of impeachment and incitement of assertion alleges President Trump's conduct on Wednesday gravely endangered the security of the United States. He would be the first president to be impeached twice. CBS News has learned Vice President Pence will attend President-elect Joe Biden's inauguration on January 20th. President Trump has already said that he will not be in attendance. And here in Madison, a group of people organized a car caravan protest Saturday afternoon afternoon to Senator Ron Johnson's Madison office. They say Senator Johnson's actions helped lead to Wednesday's assault on the Capitol. They left Johnson letters. They left Johnson letters demanding his immediate resignation while Johnson has supported many of the Trump's false claims about the election. He ended up voting against any attempts to change the election outcome. And in Wausau, people gathered to hear local federal politicians address their concerns about maintaining conservative values as a new administration is set to take power. Get Involved Wisconsin organized the rally called Save the Republic. Our news partners in Wausau were not allowed inside. Attendees told them that speakers discussed ways for conservatives to get involved in government at the local level. I think it gave a lot of us conservatives, you know, some hope that, um, because we're, we're all concerned about the direction this country is going in, especially with this new administration, and we don't want to lose our freedoms. Rally goers say Congressman Tom Tiffany was there to speak to the crowd. And slow vaccine rollout continues as more Americans contract the coronavirus. We have the details coming up. But first, here's a live look outside. Dana is tracking your Sunday morning forecast. That's next. Carrier has a complete line of home heating products to keep your family comfortable this winter without burning your budget. With smart temperature management and remote access options, it's easier than ever to control your home's climate. And Carrier energy efficient systems can help reduce utility bills without sacrificing comfort. For more complete comfort and greater peace of mind, turn to your Carrier expert. Harker Heating and Cooling. This is the big one, folks. The Brothers Main Everything's on Sale sale. Get huge clearance prices on every brand in the store with 0% financing for up to 18 months. Only Maine delivers more satisfaction every day, like a risk-free 30-day price satisfaction guarantee, giving you 100% confidence in your purchase. How's that for more? The Everything's on Sale sale with more selection, more savings, and more happy homes on everything. Now at the Brothers Main, your local store for more since 1938. Dear Winter, it's been fun getting to know you. Sleet, blizzards, ice. I love that you don't hold back. We didn't take it personally when you tried to bury us under six feet of snow. It's cool. You do your thing, and we'll do ours. Stay chill. Toyota Trucks. Right now, you can get $500 customer cash on a new 2021 Toyota 4Runner. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. So, how's saving for the renovation going? All done. I will never understand how you do it. Easy. She saves with BMO Harris. We give you a cash reward for every month you save. So BMO will give me cash for saving money? You bet. Can the subject hold position two, please? How's this? That's odd. That makes saving look good. When a bank helps you make real financial progress, that's the BMO effect. Get a $5 reward every month you save $200 or more in a new BMO statement savings account. A surprise party, a wedding proposal, an unexpected bonus at work. Some surprises are awesome, but this? Weather like this should never be a surprise. Not when you watch News 3 Now, where you get an accurate, reliable forecast, so you're never caught off guard by the weather. Need to get up early to shovel, add time to your commute, wear boots, rebook a flight? Let News 3 Now first warn weather give you everything you need to know so you can plan your life.
Get more local news now with Channel 3000 Plus, our free digital streaming service that brings you area news and info 24-7 from the News 3 Now team. Channel 3000 Plus. Download it today and watch from your streaming media player or mobile device. At News 3 Now, we've been asking attentive viewers to rescan TVs in order to receive our boosted broadcast signal. If you're still experiencing problems after rescanning, you may need to install a UHF VHF combined antenna. For more information, please go to channel3000.com. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to your cloudy Sunday. Temperatures in the low 20s right now with our breeze coming in from the northwest in the single digits. Uh, so overall, it's just been a very cool but quiet start to the day. That pattern is going to continue as we get into the afternoon and just carry us into the work week. Cloudy again for the afternoon. Some sun possible for early in the week. Likely going to be seeing variably cloudy skies for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, which means just a little more cloud coverage than sunshine. Dry conditions expected through the middle of the week. We don't have anything new moving in until we get to Thursday and Friday. That's when we have the chance for some light snow and another opportunity for some light snow by the end of the weekend as we look ahead to Sunday. Right now, radar is pretty quiet. We've had a few flurries moving through the eastern edge of Iowa County. Those flurries, though, of course, not adding anything to the ground, but I wouldn't be surprised if a few folks saw some snowflakes swirling around early today. We're going to stay cloudy through the afternoon, so temperatures won't move too much for afternoon highs. Might add on a degree or two for us later today. We'll be mostly cloudy to start the day on Monday with high or overnight low temperatures in the upper teens. Afternoon high temperatures again in the upper 20s. So the pattern continues on to start off the work week. This is thanks to, of course, that cloud coverage keeping us pretty steady and the snow depth on the ground. That snow packs keeping things quite cool and pretty steady with our temperatures for overnight lows and for afternoon highs. But it is likely looking at our 6 to 10 day outlook that we'll see a little bit of a boost to see our temperatures starting to climb above average just a little bit. And our 8 to 14 day outlook, not as much of a strong trend with our temperatures. Likely that we'll see a little more precipitation, though, and that 8 to 14 day outlook puts us towards the end of January as we look two weeks out. Uh, likely that we're going to see a few opportunities for a little bit of snow to build in. Not a lot, but we will have a little bit of we'll in this dry stretch by the end of the week. Upper 20s for Sunday and for Monday. Cloudy skies today, but by Monday later on, we'll have those variably cloudy skies. So a little bit of sun possible for Monday and Tuesday. By Wednesday, we'll see highs in the mid 30s. So we warm up a little bit in front of that next system that brings the chance for snow Thursday and Friday. That snow chance cools us down for Friday and Saturday. We'll see highs drop back to the 20s with another opportunity for snow on Sunday. And that small chance for snow leads us to a cooler trend for the following week. We could be seeing high temperatures dropping down to the teens and those overnight lows falling back to the single digits. So that's when it starts to feel a little chilly outside early in the morning. Quite cool when we see those temperatures in the single digits and we start talking about wind chills below zero. So that's something we'll be keeping an eye on as we head into uh, the following week, Taylor. All right, Dana, thank you so much. Keep that jacket handy. I'll remember that. Well, turning to our coronavirus news, 27 more people have died of COVID-19 within the state. Those deaths were reported yesterday afternoon by state and county health officials. Nearly 3,000 people were alerted with this within the last day, and so they could have their positive test results. And in the U.S., the slow vaccine rollout continues as American infections surpass 22 million. Devs have topped at least 371,000. Daniel Bacchus has the latest. The worst of the COVID crisis has America in its grips, setting alarming new records. More than 20,000 deaths this week. That's someone dying every 29 seconds. Health officials warned darker days could come. Arizona now one of the worst hotspots in the world. The state's governor still refusing a mask mandate, but ramping up vaccination efforts, designating the Arizona Cardinals NFL Stadium a 24-7 vaccination site. Nationwide, the vaccine rollout can't come fast enough for weary frontline workers. Marnie Pomeroy is a pediatric audiologist in Kentucky. The anxiety has been overwhelming, worrying about contracting coronavirus from the community or one of my patients. So far, just over six and a half million Americans have been vaccinated, significantly short of what was supposed to be 20 million by the end of 2020. President-elect Joe Biden says he'll pick up the pace. I'm committed to get 
100 million shots in people's arms in the first 100 days. Scheduling glitches are proving costly. In Irvine, California, a nearly two mile backup had healthcare workers waiting hours for their shot. And in Los Angeles County, the situation is dire. The hospital system is bent about as far as it can bend. The next sound may be a snap. With no space at the morgue, the National Guard is helping to move the bodies of the dead to refrigerated trucks. California saw its deadliest day Friday. Here in L.A. County, a person dies from COVID-19 every five minutes. To help distribute vaccines faster, vaccination pods like the one behind me have been set up across the county for health care workers. Danya back is CBS News, Los Angeles. Well, it's been a slower vaccine rollout than promised, but some Milwaukee area nursing home staff and residents have a reason to celebrate. They have finally gotten their first dose of the Moderna vaccine. They marked the occasion as a congressional home in Brookfield with disco music and dancing as Walgreens employees vaccinated staff and their residents. Today we're partying. We're having a great time. We're excited. This is our first COVID vaccine clinic. For 10 months, residents have only been able to see their families through just a window or a video screen. These vaccinations mean they are one step closer to having in-person visitors ready again. Well, coming up, if you still have time to be a multimillionaire, the Mega Millions jackpot reached their fourth big time in history. Plus, how one man's death sparked protests across the nation and police brutality. That's just ahead on News 3 Now this Sunday morning. Look Who's 3 is sponsored by Three Bears Resort, Indoor Water Park and Conference Center in Warrens, Wisconsin. I'm a little old to count down the days, but my ski trip to Cascade Mountain with my cousin each year, so much fun. We used to pretend like we were flying. Now, we really do. My dad and my uncle like that we still <laughs> ski free. But Noah and I, we just have fun. See you there. Is your credit score getting in the way of the things you want to do? Personal loans through NetCredit offer fast and flexible lending. Borrow up to $10,000 and choose repayment terms that work for you. You may even be able to build your credit history as you repay. NetCredit, a more personal, personal loan. Whatever your water worry, Culligan Water can help. With over 40 filtration systems, including the world's best softener, no one filters more than Culligan Water, the only water that comes with a van. Contact Culligan, the local water experts. Extended through January 15th, join Planet Fitness for no enrollment. $10 a month, no commitment. 2020 is over. Start 2021 with tons of ways to get moving in our clean and spacious clubs. And spread out while you work out with cardio distancing and our new crowd meter. Plus, use our app to get moving anywhere. Your fitness is essential, so kick things off with the year's best deal. Join for no enrollment, $10 a month, no commitment. Deal ends January 15th. Five Madison area locations. Sign up for $10 a month. Stop in today. Accurate news as it happens. We want to make sure our vaccination sites are ready. Right here, where you live. Nearly half of Dane County's total COVID deaths have come in the last month. Information that you can use. These case counts are still testing our public health system and straining our hospital system. From the team you can trust. So many generous people are willing to help us. For more local stories that impact your life, News 3 Now. You make plans, what to wear, where to go, when to go, what to bring, and then the weather changes everything. Let News 3 Now First Warn Weather prepare you for what's coming first, fast, and accurately so you can plan your life. Away from your TV? Not a problem. Get breaking news, weather alerts, and political coverage from the award-winning News 3 Now team. Plus, all things Madison. Stay connected anywhere with Channel 3000, Madison's number one digital news source. News 3 Now First Warn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. 
Good morning, everyone, and happy Sunday to you. It is cloudy outside right now, and it will stay cloudy through this afternoon. High temperatures again today in the upper 20s. Variably cloudy skies expected for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, which means we might see a few pockets of sunshine in there, but still continuing on with a an overall cloudy trend. Temperatures steadily warming by the middle of the week will be in the mid-30s, and our next chance for some light snow starts to develop for Thursday and Friday. Doesn't look like it's going to lead to a lot of accumulation, but still a little light snow passing through. Behind that system will cool back down for Friday and Saturday afternoons. Uh, another opportunity for light snow on Sunday, and that will yet again drop our temperatures as we look ahead to the following week. We could start to see some overnight lows in the single digits. Taylor? All right, Dana, thank you. Well, more than seven months after his death, barricades remain at the intersection where George Floyd was killed in Minneapolis. His death sparked protests across the nation over police brutality. Minneapolis community leaders and city officials are working together to figure out what that square will look like in the future. David Schumann reports. Janelle Austin, one of the lead caretakers of the George Floyd Memorial at 38th in Chicago, led us in past the barricades, which remain up more than seven months after Floyd died. She says this place's existence is an act of protest meant to disrupt. We look at our protest, it's art. Up there, somebody bought out the billboards. Janelle says every offering, every piece of art, is an expression of pain and hope. Because the community's been traumatized, she says, and all this here is needed. We we are going to hold the space with art peacefully until somebody can get it in their imagination that we have to do something differently. Janelle's been in conversation with City Council Vice President Andrea Jenkins, including Thursday night in a community Zoom discussion. Jenkins told me before the talk she's fought for social justice and police accountability for decades and will always do so, but she feels that can be done without indefinitely barricading a public intersection. Protesters cannot just take over the city. <laughs> It, it, that's not a reality. Jenkins did commit to making the physical memorial permanent as she fields calls from constituents about the challenges of the current setup. You got to be let in, I mean, and, and let out is a, is a real concern for the residents that live there. Um, the businesses. Jenkins wouldn't offer a specific timeline on when the barricades should be removed, and Janelle said it should be when several demands for justice are met. Well, you still have the chance to be a multimillionaire. The Mega Millions jackpot has reached $600 million for just the fourth time in history. Now the jackpot increased. No ticket matched all six numbers drawn on Friday. While no one got the jackpot, there were 2.5 million winners, including five tickets with the game's second prize. Those were sold in California, Georgia, Massachusetts, New Jersey, and New York. The jackpot was last one on Septem September 15th. The next drawing is set for Tuesday. And coming up, there's a whole half hour of news still ahead on News 3 now this Sunday morning. Next, we're running through this morning's top stories. Plus, Madison students will have to stay home a little bit longer. Why Madison City Schools say they aren't ready to open just yet. Hey, Tom. Sheila. Hey, uh, don't take losing the Anderson business personally. I resigned at Tom. I guess they didn't tell you about their opossum problem. I thought it was pronounced possum. I'm a little old to count down the days, but my ski trip to Cascade Mountain with my cousin each year, so much fun. We used to pretend like we were flying. Now, we really do. My dad and my uncle like that we still be free. But Noah and I, we just have fun. See you there. Do you take daily prescription pain medications, but they don't help enough? Do you want more options to better manage chronic pain? University of Wisconsin-Madison Stamp Study offers free, safe, therapeutic programs to address chronic pain. The programs occur once a week for eight weeks and pays up to $340. Call 608-212-6902 today. Again, that's 608-212-6902.
the new year with a new room from Steinhoffels during our extended New Year's sale. Save 35% store-wide and get amazing deals like any size Sealy mattress, only $99. This queen bed, $6.99. Or this dining set, $7.99. This leather sofa, now only $9.99. And make your new room more affordable with Steinhoffels 60-month special financing. Only at Steinhoffels and Steinhoffels.com. So I can get the latest phones free with no hidden requirements? Yep, all season long. And do I have to get the most expensive plan? Nope, no plan restrictions. Okay, but we have to trade in our phones. Right? Right? Nope, keep your phones. Did you trade free phones? Yep, the latest phone's free for you. Okay, Switch to U.S. Cellular and get the latest phones free, available all season long with no hidden requirements. U.S. Cellular, upgrade to fair. Hey folks, kids in hunger, food pantries say the need is way up right now. Monday morning, we'll show you how they're trying to keep up and explain ways you can help. Join us Monday for News 3 Now this morning. As vaccine distribution continues in Wisconsin, News 3 Now breaks down the timeline. Who will be vaccinated during each phase? And when could you and your family expect to reach the front of the line? Monday on News 3 Now at 10. This is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning, everyone. It is Sunday, January 10th. I'm Taylor Lazenby. Let's get straight to it with a check of our weather this morning. Good morning, Dana. Hey, good morning, Taylor, and good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. It is cloudy outside for us right now. Not too foggy downtown Madison, though, where temperatures are in the low 20s right now. So it's cool. Our is coming in from the northwest in the single digits. Visibility not reduced for us uh, in Dane County, but as we look off to the west, we're seeing a little bit of patchy fog for parts of Grant County, Iowa County. County stretching up into Crawford and Richland County as well. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if some of those lower lying rural areas are dealing with some patchy fog this morning. No dense fog to be concerned about. You can see visibility is still uh, at several miles, but reduced down quite a bit from where we usually see it at. That really lines up with the area that's also seeing cooler temperatures this morning. A temperature swing of about five degrees for areas off to the west. Only a degree or two difference for us in Dane County, Rock and Green County. We're also seeing temperatures in the mid to upper 20s in Dane and Rock County, but cooler, closer to 20 degrees off to the west. That's closer to our dew points right now. That's where the fog concern is, or just some patchy fog. Not so much of a concern, just some patchy fog this morning. Temperatures staying in the mid to low 20s further east you go. Now we're going to stay cool this morning and cloudy outside later this afternoon. The cloud coverage sticks around, but we might see some sun tomorrow. We'll look at your full 10 day in just a few minutes, Taylor. All right, Dana, thank you so much. Well, President Trump is facing the possibility of being the first ever president to be impeached twice. Now, those gears are a motion to attempt to remove President Trump from office. That's just coming with just weeks left in his term after lawmakers on both sides of the aisle say the president is responsible for inciting a mob of his supporters to storm the U.S. Capitol on Wednesday, leaving behind a trail of death and destruction. Whitney Wilde has the latest from Washington, D.C. Articles of impeachment have been drawn up by House Democrats who are planning to formally introduce them on Monday. We include a single uh, article on incitement of insurrection, which really focuses on the president's efforts to really uh, disrupt or have his, his supporters disrupt a sacred proceeding of the Electoral College by promoting this lie that he won the election. The White House responding in a statement saying, a politically motivated impeachment against a president with 12 days remaining in his term will only serve to further divide our great country. <laughs> Now, in the aftermath of Wednesday's lethal show of force, President Trump's Twitter account has been permanently suspended and a federal investigation has been launched into the killing of a Capitol Police officer. More than a dozen people are facing federal charges stemming from the riots, including Republican West Virginia state lawmaker Derek Evans, who filmed himself storming the U.S. Capitol during the deadly riot. Evans' attorney responded to the charges, saying his client was exercising his First Amendment rights and did not participate in 
any violence or destruction. They're terrorists, domestic terrorists, and that'll be a judgment for the, the Justice Department to make as to what the charges should be. But the fact is, they should be prosecuted. In Washington, I'm Whitney Wild reporting. Here in Madison, a group of people organized a car caravan protest this Saturday to Senator Ron Johnson's Madison office. They say Senator Johnson's actions helped lead to Wednesday's assault on the Capitol. They left Johnson letters demanding his immediate resignation. While Johnson has supported many of President Trump's false claims about the election, he ended up voting against any attempts to change the election's outcome. And turning to our coronavirus news, 27 more people have died from COVID-19 in Wisconsin. Those deaths were reported on Saturday afternoon by state and county health officials. Nearly 3,000 people were alerted within the last day or so that they have tested positive for the virus. And Southern California continues to see a massive spike in COVID-19 cases. A federal medical team is helping out with those COVID surge at the hospitals that are in high demand for intensive care services at a near record high. Hospital ICUs are operating at more than one and a half times capacity. Brooke McCulloch is the operations executive for Dermarin and Lodi Avenist and the two hospitals getting help from the federal medical team. Now she says because of them, both the hospitals have doubled ICU capacity. It's also allowed us to accept transfers from other hospitals in the community and really be, you know, the place where people can come for relief if they need a place for their patients. Nearly 12,000 people have died from COVID-19 in Los Angeles County alone. And the Middleton Police Department says 18 people were arrested during their last drive over and get pulled over campaign. The campaign run from December 18th to New Year's Day. In addition to drunken driving arrests, officers also made several drug arrests, felony arrests, and one arrest related to a warrant. And we're getting an update on the life of Jamie Claus two years after she escaped captivity. The Claus family posted a public message on Facebook on Saturday morning in honor of her anniversary return home. The post says in part, Jamie is doing good. We take life day by day. She enjoys dance, school activities, and many more other things as much as possible. And Jamie was declared missing in October of 2019 when sheriff's deputies responding to a 911 call found the door of her family's home and your baron kicked in. Her baron, her parents, James and Denise Claus, were shot dead inside. 88 days later, she was found 65 miles north in Gordon after her, she escaped captivity. Her captor, Jake Patterson, is serving two life sentences after pleading guilty to two counts of intentional homicide and one count of kidnapping. While well, MMSD is even closer on the vaccine, continues surge here nationally, and that's why Madison City students are staying home just a little bit longer. The Madison Metropolitan School District says the second semester will start virtually. Eventually, there are plans to bring students back in phases. Whenever COVID conditions improve, MMSD will bring back groups of students every two weeks, starting with the youngest grades. The superintendent says it just isn't safe right now to bring them back and says COVID hit close to home for him recently. And it's pretty clear that a lot of parents with differing opinions on the Madison District is making the right move to keep kids at home. While there have been groups of parents pushing for schools to open their doors, there have also been groups that who want their kids to learn virtually. You've been closed now for 10 months. How do you not have this figured out, especially with all of the emerging data that's there for you to show you how to do this safely? The bigger thing for me are the staff people and the teachers. They can get sick being around kids. They absolutely can. We have lost teachers in the United States of America to this disease because they were forced to go to school and teach. A new Department of Public 
instruction surveys shedding light on the challenges of virtual learning. Every single district surveyed by DPI reported encountering barriers when switching to this form of learning. Naming things like reliable internet, balancing school and working, and getting devices and materials to students. Lawmakers who ordered the report also wanted to know just about how much of the curriculum's teachers were able to give to students. Both Madison and Janesville reporting they were able to give about 85 percent. I think that's a really important piece here is that despite what happened, you know, the, the very little notice to transition um, and having very little time to put it together, schools still deliver instruction to students, right? And we know it's not perfect, right? I mean, it was challenging for everybody, but I think that is key. With some districts continuing with virtual learning and with this new method open for future emergencies or snow days, Faith hopes lawmakers can take note of what schools need, more resources, and the infrastructure to pull it off. Well, schools in Kenosha, Wisconsin are preparing to return for in-person learning. One teacher believes she contacted COVID-19 in the classroom and passed it on to her husband, who later died and is fighting that decision. Taylor Lumpkin has our story. She's incredibly heartbroken, as anyone could imagine. Tanya Kitz-Lewinsky is president of the Kenosha Education Association and a close friend of Jeannie Hoffman. Tanya spoke on her friend's behalf, who was too distraught over her husband's recent death due to COVID-19. She, she wants to make sure this never happens to anyone else in our district. Tanya says Jeannie's husband was high risk, but after using all of her medical leave, Tanya says Jeannie had to return to school for in-person learning, where she says she contracted the virus. Within a week and a half of reporting to work, Jeannie contracted COVID, which she then inadvertently passed on to both her mother and her husband. Although Jim fought really hard for 19 days, um, he did not make it through. During a meeting of the Kenosha School Board Wednesday night, teachers and parents gave their opinions about the return to in-person learning next week. Among them was the executive director of the Kenosha Education Association, who shared a statement from Jeannie Hoffman. Returning in person before it is safe to do so will lead to occurrences of more of the same tragedy that has needlessly struck my family. Tanya says a return to in-person teaching right now just isn't safe. Many educators are weighing their options right now. Um, I'm hearing from people who are pretty desperate and who have reached out to the district to ask what choices they have and are being told that they can take unpaid leave. I'm told another teacher similar to Jeannie also contracted COVID-19 in the classroom and passed it along to her husband who died back in November. A district spokesperson released a statement that read in part, quote, the district has always required anyone with COVID symptoms or a positive COVID test result to remain at home and we intend to continue with this practice going forward. Well, coming up, if you are a Packers season ticket holder, listen up. You may soon be able to watch in-person games. We'll have the latest when we return. Have you heard? Tempur-Pedic sleep is better sleep. With innovative memory foam developed by NASA, Tempur-Pedic mattresses reduce motion transfer. Which means less tossing and turning so you can sleep undisturbed through the night. But which Tempur-Pedic is right for you? Come to Denver Mattress and test for yourself. Let our expert sales staff guide you to your perfect Tempur-Pedic. And right now, get a free Furniture Row gift certificate when you purchase any Tempur-Pedic. Shop Denver Mattress today, your Tempur-Pedic elite retailer. The forecast calls for a messy commute. The Ford lineup helps keep you in command. Intelligent four-wheel drive monitors traction, and a terrain management system adapts to road conditions at the turn of a knob. So you're ready to take on the elements with confidence. Power through the storm in a new Ford Explorer. Now with 0% financing for 72 months, plus 4,250 bonus cash. See your Wisconsin dealer today. Culver's is a family restaurant. To me, that means being the place that puts a smile on everyone's face. We're famous for our cooked-to-order butter burgers and frozen custard made daily inside our restaurants. But we've always believed more menu options mean more ways to brighten your day. We source the finest chicken to bring you our tenders and chicken sandwiches. And our cheese curds. They're a Wisconsin tradition we're proud to share with you. 
So take the next meal shift off and let us take care of you. Welcome to Delicious. We drive everywhere to help our son reach his dream of becoming an elite swimmer. So we enrolled in the Know Your Drive program with American Family Insurance. It gives us discounts for safe driving and other benefits like emergency roadside service, which comes in handy no matter where his dreams take him. With Know Your Drive, save up to 20% and get closer to your dreams. American Family Insurance. Insure carefully, dream fearlessly. When we hear a big storm's headed our way, some of us fall back into bed, some into fresh powder. Spending your day indoors or out, it's all about knowing what to expect. Watch News 3 Now for an accurate first warn forecast so you can plan your perfect day. Ghost stories, sleeping in, afternoon naps. Some things are just better with a toasty, warm blanket. That's why News 3 Now and St. Vincent de Paul are collecting new and gently used blankets for our neighbors in need. Please drop them off at a Dane County St. Vincent de Paul store or participating area churches the last weekend of January. Or donate new blankets online at svdpmadison.org. Welcome back, everyone. Well, Aaron Rodgers is showing off his charitable side. He donated $500,000 to the Barstool Fund. This nonprofit organization is helping small businesses struggling in the pandemic. The Barstool Fund has already raised more than $21 million to help small businesses. Rodgers says he was moved by the videos of recipients on social media and said he hopes his donation has also encouraged his teammates, coaches, and the rest of the NFL to give as well. Gray Brewing Company in Janesville is receiving $20,000 from the fund. And as the number one seed in the NFC, the Packers have the weekend off. But Packers season ticket holders are invited to the divisional playoff game at Lambeau Field. That starts next weekend. Season ticket holders who opted in this summer for the chance to purchase tickets will receive information this week via email. About 6,000 tickets will be available for purchase. Additional guests, including frontline health care workers and first responders, will also be in attendance. And the Buffalo Bills are moving on in the playoffs. They beat the Indianapolis Colts 27 to 24 Saturday afternoon in Buffalo. It snaps a six game postseason losing streak. It was also the team's first home game in 24 years. Now switching to hockey now, a major upset at the arena as the Badgers beat the once undefeated Minnesota Golden Gophers. Now the Badgers beat the number one ranked Gophers three to one. Lunis Werbisky, the owner of that, all scoring for the Badgers win. And for the Badgers hockey, women's hockey team, it was a different story. The top-ranked Badgers lost to Ohio State Saturday, 2-1. to one. They ended up splitting that weekend series. Well, coming up here on News 3, it's a popular and fun activity in the wintertime, but it can also lead to people going to the emergency room. We take a look at that, but right now, take a live look over the Capitol. Dana is going to be back in a minute with our week forecast. Best stay with us. Stay updated on coronavirus vaccine information with News 3 Now. For the pets you love, well, you gotta get down to Mal's Pet Food Warehouse. Where your dollar goes to help so many pets in town. Mal's Pet Food Warehouse. We raise money for farm animals in need. And our friends living in the zoo. We feed rescue dogs and shelter cats. And don't forget your free mounds candy bar. Advanced non-small cell lung cancer can take away so much. 
But today, there's a combination of two immunotherapies you could take first. One that could mean a chance to live longer. Optivo plus Yervoy is for adults newly diagnosed with non-small cell lung cancer that is spread and that tests positive for pd one and does not have an abnormal EGFR or ALK gene. It's the first and only approved chemo-free combination of two immunotherapies that works together in different ways to harness the power of the immune system. Optivo plus Yervoy equals a chance for more days, more nights, more beautiful weekends, more ugly sweaters, more big hugs, more small outings. Optivo and Yervoy can cause your immune system to attack normal organs and tissues in your body and affect how they work. This may happen during or after treatment is ended and can become serious and lead to death. Some of these problems may happen more often when Optivo is used with Yervoy. See your doctor right away if you have a new or worse cough, chest pain, shortness of breath, diarrhea, severe stomach pain, nausea or vomiting, dizziness, fainting, extreme tiredness, weight changes, constipation, excessive thirst, changes in urine or eyesight, rash, itching, confusion, memory problems, muscle pain or weakness, joint pain, flushing, fever, or tingling in hands and feet. These are not all the possible side effects. Tell your doctor about all your medical conditions, including immune system problems, or if you've had an organ transplant or lung, breathing, or liver problems. Here's to a chance for more together time, a chance to live longer. Ask your doctor about Opdivo Plus Yervoy. Thank you to all involved in our clinical trials. Hi, guys. Triscuit brings whole grain nourishment. You keep doing what you do best. Bring it with wholesome, delicious Triscuit. Is your credit score getting in the way of things you want to do? Personal loans through NetCredit help you borrow up to $10,000. So check your eligibility on netcredit.com today without affecting your credit score. You may even be able to build your credit history as you repay. NetCredit, a more personal, personal loan. News 3 Now First Born Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Good morning and happy Sunday. It is a cloudy start to the day with temperatures in the low 20s right now. Mid to low 20s for Dane and Rock and Greene County. Areas a little further west seeing those temperatures near 20 degrees to start off the day. Our breeze is coming in from the northwest still in the single digits. So we thankfully don't have to factor in much of a wind chill for this morning. That same goes for this afternoon. We'll stay cloudy through the afternoon. Some sunshine might creep in to start off the work week. We're going to hold on to most of that cloud coverage, but we could see some pockets of sun for Monday. Monday and Tuesday. Dry weather expected through the middle of the week with our next chance for some light snow to start to develop Thursday and Friday. It won't lead to much accumulation, but still a little bit of a change in the pattern to have some light snow moving in. Another chance for light snow expected on Sunday. Right now, our high resolution radar is pretty quiet, even with the cloudy sky overhead. We did see some light flurries this morning in parts of Iowa County. Uh, nothing that's leading to any accumulation, but I wouldn't be surprised if some folks may saw uh, a few snowflakes swirling around early today. Mostly cloudy skies through this afternoon with high temperatures in the upper 20s. We'll stay cloudy heading into Sunday or into Monday. Temperatures early in the day near 20 degrees and then Monday afternoon we're expecting high temperatures in the upper 20s again. So a, a very seasonable, very steady pattern for us for the next several days. But once we get past Monday, we'll start to return to the 30s for afternoon highs. It'll get a little warmer outside for us. This cool pattern thanks to our cloudy sky overhead and the snowpack that we have on the ground. The two combined just keeping things quite insulated and steady for our overnight lows and afternoon highs. Our 6 to 10 day outlook very likely that we will be trending above average with our afternoon high temperatures. Not seeing a big swing in either direction though for our 8 to 14 day outlook. Precipitation wise a little bit of an uptick as we do have an opportunity for some light snow to develop. <coughs> Excuse me. As we head into uh, next week, light snow chances again for Thursday and Friday. The second half of the weekend, we will have some light snow coming through as well. Uh, we'll see those temperatures a little cooler outside for Friday and Saturday, and then some snow developing uh, heading into next Sunday. I think the dust was just getting to me, Taylor, right now. <laughs> a little sneeze. It's uh, pretty it's okay. quiet otherwise okay. for us in the studio today. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, David. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, it's a popular and fun activity that you like to experience during the winter time, but sledding can lead to people also going to the emergency room. Many times it's children who are hurt. Mandy Gaither has five ways to help prevent those injuries in today's Health Minute. When the snow falls down, the sleds come out and ER visits go up. We just want to make sure that they are 
aware of the risks and to make sledding as safe as possible. That's why Rebecca McAdams with Nationwide Children's Hospital co-authored a study published in the Clinical Journal of Sports Medicine, collecting data from the National Electronic Injury Surveillance System. The researchers estimated more than 220,400 patients went to the emergency room after being hurt while sledding between 2008 and 2017. Nearly 70% were 19 or younger, most hurt in a collision. They were falling off the sled and hitting the ground, or they were also hitting into a person. McAdams says many of those were head injuries, but you can lessen your risk of getting hurt by wearing a helmet, picking a sled that you can control, one that can be steered or stopped, checking your surroundings, making sure the area is obstacle-free, having an adult present to make sure everyone is staying safe, and don't use a motorized vehicle to pull a sled. Most times people were actually colliding into the ATV itself, and a lot of those people had head injuries, and three quarters of those people were actually children. So have fun in the snow, but stay safe. For Health Minute, I'm Andy Gaither. Well, researchers say the number of sledding injuries in the ER have decreased over the period that they have studied, but they say that there may be people that are possibly seeking care somewhere else, like an urgent care facility or calling their, their doctor directly. Well, 2020 also ties the record for the warmest year in a record. Now, that's according to a European U Union's climate change service. A press release from the group also notes that 20. 10 through last year was the warmest year in decade. And make sure to make News 3 part of your weekly routine by downloading the Channel 3000 app for the latest headlines and weather conditions. But first, if you're never too old to enjoy the snow, how one man is making his love for nature a reality. The New Year Super Sale at Denver Mattress has been extended, so you can still save 100 bucks on every thousand you spend. Score free shipping right to your doorstep, plus five years no interest financing. Hurry, the extended New Year Super Sale at Denver Mattress ends soon. The forecast calls for a messy commute. The Ford lineup helps keep you in command. Intelligent four-wheel drive monitors traction, and a terrain management system adapts to road conditions at the turn of a knob. So you're ready to take on the elements with confidence. Power through the storm in a new Ford Explorer, now with 0% financing for 72 months, plus 4,250 bonus cash. See your Wisconsin dealer today. Then get more ways to save at Pick and Save, where you can find personalized coupons, weekly deals, and rewards like fuel points. All for prices that are lower than low. On food that's fresher than fresh. Pick and Save. Fresh for everyone. We hear much about what divides us, our differences. But today, America is coming together as it always has. People rising to the occasion. Among them, the healthcare alumni of Herzing University. Over 12,000 strong and growing. This is your opportunity to join Herzing, to make a difference together. You can start now. Find out how at herzing.edu. Pick up the latest issue of Madison Magazine for our top nurses tribute. A wake up call on domestic abuse during COVID. Why more locals are saying bye bye to booze. And exciting new monthly features. Madison Magazine on newsstands now. Wisconsin weather can be frustrating. Get the latest forecast, alerts, and detailed traffic reports from the News 3 Now team on air, online, and download the Channel 3000 First Born app. Be the first to know what's headed our way. The New Year Super Sale at Denver Mattress has been extended, so you can still save 100 bucks on every thousand you spend. Score free shipping right to your doorstep, plus five years no interest financing. Hurry, the extended New Year Super Sale at Denver Mattress ends soon. A sewer backup destroys a Janesville woman's basement. This, this isn't my fault. I didn't cause the damage. But the city says they're not liable either. Why this disabled vet is afraid she'll lose her home. Could it happen to you? News 3 Now investigates tonight at 10. Accurate news as it happens. 
Right here, where you live. Information that you can use from the team you can trust. For more local stories that impact your life, News 3 Now. Finally, this morning, residents of a Minnesota-Wisconsin border know a thing or two about the snow and winter. Of course, folks there can't escape the snow, but so many choose to embrace it. Let's take a look. Every in town knows Dean, loves Dean. You can't go a day without seeing Dean and Molly going down the street. Teacher, council member, and owner of a garden center. Those are just some of the hats Dean Conklin has worn over the years. Winthrop is a jolly good time. I think I know everybody, just about. And they know him for his generous nature. A while back, he gave some land to Steve Saxton, one of his former students. When he retired, he gave this five acre piece to me and other than bail some some ditch hay for the cattle down below we didn't know what we could do with this but then an idea hit them like a january snowball okay, you gotta go. steve and other volunteers decided to turn the property into a city sledding hill within a few weeks they had the tree stumps removed and all the brush cleared out and then there was little doubt about who they would name the sledding hill after he's a special guy so that made it a no-brainer to do it absolutely i thought what what? So last Saturday, more than 100 people turned out to watch Dean Conklin himself go down Conklin's Hill. It was perhaps his first time down a snowy hill in half a century. It was exciting being at the bottom and seeing everybody at the top. And then he got down and he said, what a ride. I'm over 90. So as a 90-year-old guy to go down that hill, kind of, kind of exciting. The kid came out of me. You know, Sledder and Winthrop, but he's challenging that for the age of 91 to come try out the hill themselves. Well, Macy's announced a new round of store closures this week. 45 locations will be permanently shutting its doors in the coming months. After 29 were closed just last year, the retail is just one of many industries crippled by the pandemic, which is leading many of our layoffs. And let's take a quick look of our weather with Dana. Dana, how are we looking going? into the work week. Overall, things are staying pretty quiet outside for us. We'll be cloudy again today. We're cloudy right now in the low 20s for Madison, close to 20 degrees in Platteville and at Lone Rock. We'll see highs in the upper 20s tomorrow, Tuesday and Wednesday, variably cloudy skies. So a little more cloud coverage than sunshine, but notice the temperature trend moving up a little bit. We'll be in the mid 30s by the middle of the week. Our next chance for light snow starts to develop Thursday and Friday. That system's going to cool us down back to the mid 20s for afternoon highs. Another opportunity for light snow on Sunday really cools us down for the following week with those high temperatures falling back to the teens. All right, that will do it for us this morning. Have a great weekend.